Hey you, thanks for tuning in. If you want to know how to use the image to text or the chat module from the Google Gemini API, this video is for you. If you are here to see how to get started with the Gemini API in general, I can recommend the linked video first, because we will cover these two more advanced functions from the Gemini API in this video. But before we get into it, some general information and a walkthrough through the basic code. In my last video, I created a class called Gemini AI which can be used to ask the model a question by using a prompt and then get a single feedback from it. For this I created a function called GenerateResponse inside the class that takes an input text which represents the prompt. This video also covers how to use the API key stored in a secure.nv file. And then we had set up the main.py file where we can use this class and where we also will use the two classes for text to image and the chat classes and its functions. You can grab the full code on my GitHub. I will link it in the description. That's it in preparation. Let's start after the intro and jump straight into an update of the API versions. In my last video I mentioned that there will be a pay-as-you-go version of the API soon. Now we got an update with more details I want to show with you. The good news are, the free version of the API with limited access will stay. For the paid version, you just need to enable billing in your AI studio and accept the new terms to get started with the pay-as-you-go version if you want. This already started on May 14th. Here's a short overview of the different types. Pause the video if you are interested in more details. If you wonder about the 10 RPM or request per minute in the pay-as-you-go version, there are two ways to increase this limit. You can request more RPM by the API team, like you can see in the notice below here. You can find the link in the description. Or use techniques in your code to manage your requests, like combine your request to use the bigger context window of the API, or you can time your requests matching the RPM and so on. We also got new models that will be available soon. The Flash for faster response, the Ultra as most advanced model with 2 million context window and the Nano as an on-device model for Android. You can request a preview access on the Google site now. Sorry for the long intro, but I want to ensure you have all necessary info to follow me along. But now let's get started with the image text module from the API. We start by creating a ready to use class for this. In this we only need to handle the three inputs like the model we want to use, the image we want to work with and an additional prompt we can use beside the image. As you can see, I created a new image to text pi file where I import the OS library and the google.generative.ai library as gen.ai. If you haven't installed the generative AI library yet, you can use this pip install command to do so. To work with images, we also need to import and install the pill library. We will use the image module to open the image later. You can install it via the pip install pillow command. Then we create the class and do the basic setup for the init. I call this class Gemini image. In the init part, I pass the model so I can later easy change the model where I use it and don't need to change it in the class itself. I pass this model into the class variable self dot model name to store it in the class and make it available for the class function. And then I load the API key stored in an .nv file called google underscore API underscore key to a local variable called API key. Then we can do the config of the library and the setup of the right model. I wrap this in a try statement to ensure the model is loaded and prepared correct. For the config, we pass the above stored API key to the genai configure function. And then we set up the model by passing the chosen Gemini model to the generative model class. And then I close the try block by adding an exception that I print to the console to see when the model isn't loaded correct. You could improve this by using a logger. Now we are ready to bring function to the class. Like I said earlier, we can use an image and a prompt and ask specific things about the image. But always remember, the prompt is optional for this model. For this, we create the function generate response with these two inputs. Like always, I like to add an info comment to the function. In this case, I add generates a response out of an image and a prompt, which is optional, using the Gemini Vision model. And that's where things are getting interesting. To ensure everything works fine, I will wrap it again in a try statement. Then I create a variable where I save the image to. To open the image, I use the image class with the open function from pillow. And here I use the image input as parameter. Then I can create a response by using the model generate content function. 
as input in the squared brackets, I use the loaded image and the input text as prompt. And then we set the stream parameter to true. The stream parameter allows you to choose how to get the response, streamed in chunks or the full response at one time. This fully depends on your use of the model, but stream is in the most times more comfortable for the users. The resolve function ensures you got the response before the following code is executed. And then we return the response, or in my case, to keep it simple, just the text from it. It's a good idea to once print the full response to check what Google gives you back. To close the dry statement, we add the expect with expection as e and print an error to the console. For this time, I return none to make it more bulletproof. Then we can jump over to the main.py and start using it. Because I reworked my last video version, I need to import .env here again. It's always a good advice to swift sensible data like an API key to an NV file. Now let's import our new class by using the import statement from image to text import Gemini image. When we created the class, we said we want to make the used model flexible, so we can decide which model we want to use when there will be more opportunities in the future. That's why I create the model name image variable, where I pass in this case as a string the Gemini-Pro-Vision2, which represents the used model. I call our model our image AI here. Then I initialize our class Gemini image by using this model as parameter. Then I create a helper function, which I will use in the if main block later. This is just for the showcase purpose. I call it image response and it will take our two inputs called input for the prompt and img for the image. Then I just return the output of the generate response function from our Gemini image class. And then we can start using it. Let me clear up the code a bit so we don't run multiple functions at once. I will use the function to describe my channel image. Here a reminder how it looks. Like I said earlier, you can use the model in two ways. The model will always try to describe the image you gave it as input. That's the first way, without a prompt. But when you use the prompt input in addition, you can ask things about the description of the image. I will show you this in first. The image is stored in my VS Code project, so I can use the direct path. If you use it from another location, please extend this. For the first run, I used the following prompt. What prompt was used to create this image with stable diffusion? As you can see, I just created the two input variables. Then I passed these two strings to our helper function to actually run it. I made some fun of it and used the output of this run in stable diffusion to recreate my image. But now let's run this code. The first result is a young boy with spiky hair and headphones is sitting and so on. The model here tried to add some information that can be used to recreate it like a cartoonish style. But you could also ask the model about details in the image, like what color does the boy's hair have. I show you the stable diffusion results at the end of the section. But now let's do another run with an empty prompt to see the difference. It says, a young boy sits on a stack of old electronics and so on. As I made this video, I just saw that in my example it's hard to spot the difference, but I hope you still get the idea. But now let's check the outputs from Stable Diffusion. I did run a batch of 6 images with these settings on the WebForge UI using Stable Diffusion models and using the first model response we got. Pause the video if you want to see more details and if you are interested in a video about how to use Stable Diffusion on your PC, just let me know this in the comments. Here you can see the image in detail. And I need to say I really like the look of it. Maybe I will make this my new logo. This is another interpretation of the input. I want to mention that you don't need a high-end PC to run local models. Look at my PC specs. 8 years old and still works for this. Thanks for watching until here. I really would appreciate some feedback and a subscribe from you. That's it for the text to image function. Now let's get to the chat function with Gemini. Basically I do the same boilerplate code like previous with just a few changes. We will create a new class that we run with a helper function on the main.py later. In a new file called chat.py we import os and the generative AI library from Google. Then we create the class Gemini chat where I copy and paste the init function from the Gemini image class because it is the same. Then again we make it bulletproof by adding a try statement where we configure the model. In here I also paste the config of the model. To run a chat we need to store the previous user inputs and outputs from the model to show the history. Glad that there is a function from Google that manages it for us. For this we need to initialize an empty chat by using the start chat function from the generative model module. In here we create an empty list called history and pass it to the class variable called chat. Let's add an exception and an error message. 
and then we can be sure the model is loaded and configured right before we use it. Now we can start adding some functions. In this class we will need two functions, one for the user input to the model, in my case called request with an user input parameter and the second one to load the chat history. I call this one get last response which takes no input because I can access the history list inside the class. The request function will handle the user input and the model output and will store it in the history list. But at first I add a description to the function saying sends user input to the chat session and returns the response. The response this time will be generated by the send message function. Behind this function is the logic to store the history. As input it just takes the user input parameter from the function and again we set the stream parameter to true so we get a flowing answer. If you just joined here, with the stream parameter you decide if you want the full answer in one package or in splitted batches which you can show while the model is generating. The resolve function ensures again the model gave us a response before we go on in the code. Then we return the full response. We will separate the text in the call later to show you the different ways like I mentioned in the image to text class. In the get last response function I add the description, returns the last response from the chat history. I now add a if statement, which does two things. Check if the history list contains an item, then get the last response. Or if not, then it's a new chat and then print a welcome message. Let's start with the first scenario. We can check this by saying if self.chat.history is true, then we can assign the last item of the chat history list by using the minus one in the brackets to the verbal last message to grab just the last input of the list. And then we return this last message. With this way we don't need to load the full list every time, because we just add the last message to the UI. To improve the readability I do some formatting with the response. The first part is later the role that gave the input or the response, like the user or the model. The second part is the filtering of the response text. This time we do it by accessing the first item of the parts list and getting its text property. I wrap this in an f-string with some asterisks to show which is what. You will see the y later when we use it. And then we can finish the if statement with an else and the mentioned message if the history list is empty. I adjust some text like, this is a new chat, how can I help you today? To act like your friendly AI. <laughs> That's it for the class, let's load it and use it. Back to the main.py. Here we import the Gemini chat class from the chat file. Then we define the model we want to use for this function by defining the model name chat variable. In this case we are fine with the Gemini Pro model. But I think the flash version that is currently in preview and will be available soon would do the best here. Because a fast response is better for the usability. Then we initialize our new Gemini chat class by assigning it to the new variable chatbot. As parameter to the class we use the previous defined model named chat variable. Then again I create a helper function which I will run in the main block. This time I call it chat underscore response with no input. Because the input will be requested by the function itself. Inside we create a while loop that runs the chat until we exit it by using the while true statement. Then I start by showing the last response by printing the chatbot get last response function. I do this first because if you remember the if statement in the class which checks if the history list is empty and if so it print a welcome message. I want this to be shown first. Then I use the input function from Python to ask the user a question and assign it to the verbal user input. You should use this in a web GUI or something like this but for showcase purpose I keep it simple here. After that I add a simple break of the loop if the user input is empty so we can exit and restart the chat. I do this by. If user input is an empty string then return break. But notice the chat history will be deleted if you restart it. To prevent this you could save the chat at this point somewhere like in your database or in a local file. The last step is to pass the user input to the chatbot's request function and then we are ready to go. Let me comment out the previous code of the image to text helper function in the if main block and then let's add the chat response function here. Now when we run the code we see first the welcome message once and then the user input request. I ask the model here to tell me a joke and the model responds. What do you call a lazy kangaroo? A pouch potato. Ha ha ha. But now because we use a while loop and Google handles the history we can start asking follow up questions. Like I do with the another one. And the model responds with another joke. That's the magic of the chat function. 
To break it, we just need to send an empty input to the model. And that's it! So you master two more functions from the Gemini API. Thanks for watching and great success with your project. Please share it with me and let's meet in the comments if you have any questions. If you would like to learn even more about Python, check out my other videos. And maybe follow. Bye and have a nice one.